531. I'll call the meeting to order. Um, Jessica, if you'll record the attendance. Um, Article two, approval of the agenda. If you have not had a chance to look at the agenda and you can take a look at those items, I'll take a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve tonight's agenda. I can second it. Thanks, Stephen Scott. Article three, approval of, of the minutes of the March 19th meeting. If you haven't had a chance to look at those, if you would scan over those, Take a motion to approve the meet, the uh, minutes of the last meeting. I will motion. And I will second. Thank you. You guys aren't calling me out on any of this. Um, article four, acknowledge visitors wishing to speak regarding any agenda or non-agenda items. It doesn't look like we have anyone in the audience here, Jessica, anyone? Nope, there's no one on the phone. So we can move on to article five, sidewalk repair discussion. Well, I'll present to you um, what we bid out and what is our contractor is available to do. Um, so what I put out for bid was about 5,500 square foot sidewalk replacement. Um, there's a map included in the packet. I think it's 28 different locations through the village area, Old 28th, 28th, and Cascade Road. Criteria for those locations being anywhere from about a half inch to upwards. Some of them are probably a two or three inch. Um, in some instances, um, trip hazard, just the differential between two squares typically either heaved because of a structure, utility structure cover, or most of them are trees or just damaged for another reason. Um, some of them are cracked up and maybe that's why they're, they've cracked and they're settled um, and they've caused a tripping hazard that way. I um, actually had another company, um, Precision Concrete Cutting, take a look at the village area last fall. What they do is they go through with a machine that cuts the um that what we're talking about the differential settlement out of the concrete eliminates that trip hazard um at the expense of having to shave down essentially um, one of the squares that's causing the trip hazard they came up with um i believe it was twenty six thousand dollars cost price tag to do yeah it was twenty six three eight five um to do probably just over half of it the other half to maybe one third of it they said we can't we can't shave that down we can't eliminate that it's going to do too much structural damage to the concrete um, so we would have ended up having to use them to fix the trip hazards that were there as well as find somebody to replace looks like 16 additional locations so what was in the contract that i put out for bid was 28 locations so i don't know how different really it would have ended up being we would have had still a number that needs to be replaced but anyway we received three bids um, all three um, right at or just below what I had estimated. So I'd say it's a, a pretty fair price uh, for the work being performed. That includes um, just the trickiness of being on Cascade Road, traffic control, and um, being in front of a lot of businesses and adjacent to parking and being a pedestrian heavy area. Um, but that's really all I have to say about it. Um, we want to go somewhere else with the discussion. Um, I so don't know what our next step is. Yeah. So when Eric and I first started talking about this, I think I had heard this when I first started from the DDA in regards to some of the trip hazards in the village area throughout the DDA. Um, it, it's not, it, DDAs can sometimes take care of the infrastructure and the sidewalks within the district themselves. Sometimes it gets, they put it back, the illness puts it back on the actual property owner, um, which is probably more common in the, Cascade Township, we do not have a local ordinance where it puts that onus back on the property owners. So when I got with Eric, I said, let's bid this out. Let's have the discussion with the DDA and see if it's something that we feel strongly that we should do. Um, and we will have to do something because we are kind of on notice. There is actually a state law, so we are liable um, if we don't make the repairs. So um, that's it. we're kind of in a catch-22 because it has been reported to us. We have done this. We now know our trip hazards. We have to fix them. But I guess I wanted to present this to the DDA to see if there was a desire to uh, fund these repairs um, through the DDA 
um, especially with all the efforts we're going to be making <clears throat> in the district area and the village area and promoting the pedestrian friendly area that it is. I think that that was my biggest question of is the DDA solely responsible for maintaining these sidewalks or is it a shared like what are our lanes of responsibility versus the township as mm -hmm. a whole so how does that all work and then it, it will follow like if it is fully under our responsibility do we this is something we should budget for um, yeah. or be a part of the budget is my point of view. Yeah. Um, I can say that in another community I was at, we did do some utility work. Anything that was done in the district usually fell back on the DDA to fund. Mm -hmm. But I do agree with you that we need to be looking at this on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. And then I've already started talking with Grace and the rest of the board in regards. Cascade doesn't have a lot of sidewalks, especially in, the, in their neighborhoods, which is where you usually have a lot of issues. But in this district and up and down 28th Street through Centennial Park, there's a lot of sidewalks in there that should be we should have a local ordinance that addresses it and that cost share or the cost for repair should be put back on the property owner. And if any of you don't live in Cascade and live in a community where there is neighborhoods or another community, it's it, it's common to have that type of sidewalk ordinance. So with that, um, specifically that discussion there in terms of the onus being put on the, the property owner, um, I would Part of me says as a property owner and a business owner who is, has sidewalks in front of my building and yet there is a i don't know under the planning commission they say you need to have x amount of trees then i'd be like well i don't want because i know that trees are going to eventually cause the sidewalk to go out. it's going to cost me more money so you're costing me double to one, plant the trees, and two, in 10 years or whatever, when the trees get big enough, the roots are gonna start lifting that, and that's another cost. So how can we make it palatable mm -hmm. in that respect? Because that's where I think that some of the issue may come up, yeah. um, especially even in Centennial, there are some, some larger trees um, that are gonna cause some of that sidewalk to go up. And if again, if that's going to be part of the township's planning com planning preference, mm -hmm. then there, there's got to be some give and take there. So I think right, and I think that's all part of the discussion we have as we address the issues of sidewalks, especially in the district. And then my second comment was on this area here, and 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 I know that we're going to have continuing conversation about what's going to happen with Old Twenty Eighth Street, what's going to happen with Cascade, what's going to happen with the village as a whole. Um, two things. One, are we foreseeing any utility work being done to where we go and spend a hundred thousand dollars and get this all fixed? Then all of a sudden DTE comes okay. in, like I'm seeing going through East Grand Rapids right now and everything is getting ripped up and then we're going to be redoing it all over again. Um, secondly, uh, again, as we talk about the redevelopment of this whole area, is it going to, again, are we going to be taking out sidewalks, um, to have to replace to where does it somewhat and i know eric you talked about the shaving aspect does it make sense on those 26 spots shave those down to save some of that money if we know what's going to be happening down the road but i know we don't have a crystal ball so i just throw that out there i hate to spend money now to know that in four years we're going to be replit spend another hundred thousand dollars because of our objectives of what we want to try to create right you're right. But we we still have to shit. I mean, we still have to take care of it. As yeah. you said, we've been put on notice. And so yeah. We and have to take care of it. Yeah. But and I don't is think there that's... a way we could take care of it without spending a whole hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And I don't think that's lost on, I, I, I don't think that that would get lost. It's not lost on me. I understand what you're saying. I think when we look at where the, the district goes and the village goes in the future, which, you know, is somewhat unknown, some of it's going to be developer that are going to be redoing their projects and redeveloping their sites. Mm -hmm. So if there was any sort of repairs or construction um, damage that was done, it would be put back on them during that process. And then as far as utilities, and Eric, you can jump in here on this one, but most of the utilities, um, although it looks like it's very, um, they get out there, they create a mess, especially these communication utilities that you see laying fiber up and down 28th Street as they are right now. They're not actually under the sidewalk. Right. They're in the green belt. So I, I don't know if you want to add more to that or not. Yeah, in my experience, any utility that it's in their permit, you anything you damage, you're putting back. That as well, yeah. Yeah, yes. so yep. it's it's right away permit, so. 
and some of it might be trickier to track down in my experience because yeah. if it's Metro Act, a lot of times the work they're doing is under one umbrella permit, but certainly um, it's it's not difficult or unheard of. It, it's pretty normal, it's standard to and that goes, put it back on a contractor. The utility okay. that does the damage. And that goes for roads too. So if you see okay. gas lines and stuff where roads get tore up, those utilities have to come back and make that repair. Yep. Is a hundred percent of it pretty much trip hazards and not disputification, but yeah. oh, in this, in the, yes, mm -hmm. oh, okay, so yeah, yeah, I think that was what was brought to my attention, and I can't remember the two specific spots, but there were some pretty big spots um, that we did witness people walking, and it's it's just a matter of time because they're not going to get better, right? So <clears throat> yeah, and that's why it's more or less it's pretty piecemeal because it's chasing a block, a square here, a square there, a couple squares here. You know, it's not, you know, all of 28th is bad, but everything else is good. And it, it really is here, 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 here. And um, that's because it's it's a couple squares per instance, usually to, to fix it. Um, and, and I guess per my comment before regarding trees, is there, from an engineering perspective, is there so many feet away from a sidewalk that, so to speak, it's safe to put a tree without... You know, I depends on the type of tree. So different trees have different whether or not the roots are shallow or what the roots do. Um, every every area like the village area here has this conundrum of we want sidewalks, but we want trees yeah. and you run into this. Um, but no, there's no set standard. Um, what we can do and it's written in the contract when they do replace squares that are affected by tree roots, they tend with it, they go down. I don't know what's in the contract specifically, but usually up to a foot and they remove roots that are there. Um, within reason, they don't like eliminate half the tree's roots so the thing falls over the next time it blows. But um, but they do that so that the roots that continue to grow, it's not a year from now that, you know, it's 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 heaved up again. Um, so it, it isn't just, a, it's not just a cosmetic thing. It is, it will improve. I mean, it, it won't come right back, the problem. But any area like this where there's trees and sidewalk, it just, it, it's almost unavoidable. It, it really is. Sometimes there's like a, you know, like a landscaping fabric you can put down, but that's usually for smaller roots. And, you know, that's just, it's not going to stop a tree from doing its thing. May I mention from a holistic point of view too, that because we're redoing the zoning ordinance, landscaping is going to be a lot of what we handle. So right now we have a list of trees that are not allowed, but we can also look into the best trees for sidewalks. So between Eric and I and Melanie, we can really yeah, nail there, down the right mm -hmm. set of trees. There's certainly yeah. trees that are selected for streetscapes because they only achieve... Because then you run into, I don't know what's out on Cascade Road, but aerial, aerial utilities a lot of times care about that. They don't want trees growing into the power lines or the communication lines. So there's certainly species of trees that are more conducive to being near um, sidewalks and other facilities. So in regard to going forward and looking at what the responsibility, financial responsibility might be in the future and if there can be an ordinance amendment or or a new ordinance, because we don't have anything right, right now, is that correct? Correct. Um, into looking at some sort of cost share option. Um, I'm assuming we've got some historical numbers on what we've spent over time for this sidewalk management or yeah maintenance, just so we know if if there is something we have to budget for. Mm -hmm. You know, do we have some data that will help us do that? Yeah. So we used to have a sidewalk program where I came from. And mm -hmm. anytime that we would do sidewalks, and I'm not sure how you did it in Holland, but we we would assess the sidewalks on an annual basis for the next year. So yeah. like this summer, fall, we yeah. would assess the sidewalks again, go out to bid, get some pricing, okay. and then we would make sure we had that number when we actually approved the budget okay. for the following year. So we'll, okay, mm -hmm. so we'll have it come budget time. Yeah, and that was actually done for a couple of different reasons. One is when we pass our ordinance, depending on what it looks like, if the board desires to pass an ordinance, um, the way that the communities that I worked for in the past, they actually were special assessments that were assessed against the property owners. Okay. So we had it involves a public hearing, it involves them coming in and actually being able to discuss, dispute the, mm -hmm. the, the, um, the, 
the sections that need to be replaced in front of their home or business. So it, it was kind of a lengthy process. It wasn't just going out to bid and awarding it or then just assessing them because mm -hmm. then we had some repayment options. It was, it unfortunately, like everything else, it was more involved than what you would mm -hmm. think. <laughs> so would it be fair to, I don't want to say that this was a total surprise, but of course it wasn't in our budget. Correct. To to maybe go back to the board of trustees and say, hey, you know, can it can it be split 50-50 mm -hmm. instead of putting the whole onus on the DDA? Mm -hmm. I could definitely take that mm -hmm. comment back. Yep. Yeah, I had the same thought. Yeah, I will I I mean, yes, I can go back and give those comments. I do think if we're trying to promote the district, um, could foresee the funds coming out of the DDA as a as a normal expense. And I think um, in the future, you yeah. probably can. Mm -hmm. But One again, we as, we, as yeah. we take a look at. Yeah, and this certainly budget. wouldn't be a normal annual expense, no. right? This is a bitter pill because yeah. this is playing catch up for several years. So. Yeah, I don't oh. know, and I don't have the historical knowledge. I don't know that this is ever been addressed yeah I, in sure the there's no you walk out i've walked out there, there's no new sidewalk right I mean, so you can I usually think, tell sidewalk that's been replaced in the last few years there's no, there's yeah because when we first discussed this that last october or november i went back and i'm like oh sidewalk ordinance let's see what it says and it, it, there's nothing mm -hmm. so, so i'm like okay so that's when i got together with eric i'm like let's just go figure out what our exposure is and our liability that way we can then address mm -hmm. it so. and i came from the city of holland it's a city that has over 160 miles of roads most of them have sidewalks on both sides we had a budget of seven or 50 to seventy-five thousand a year to do sidewalk repairs right. okay. so i mean it's that was for a very i mean much much larger area Absolutely. i mean this really is the extent of sidewalk and cascade mm -hmm. yeah. um, with a few exceptions and when you guys did this survey did you show the map of just the village. Did we look in up and down 28th Street and in Centennial? Or I, right now not. we just focused on the village? No. I think we just focused on the village area for now. Because um, I don't think we actually saw a lot of trip hazards actually up and down 28th Street. It happened to be. For what it's area. worth, I've never had somebody call me about a trip hazard. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think Centennial Park has a couple, just having walked through it myself. There's a couple spots, um, not off the top of my head, but I know. I know there are. Yeah, and, and I there, think but... the other reason that we zeroed in on this is I think this was the areas of concern that I heard from the board. This is um, the most concentrated. Yeah. It, it, there really are quite a few locations. So if if that's, if you want me to go back to the board, I definitely can go back to them. Um, if, if everybody is amenable to that, um, it would be nice if actually I could get some sort of approval tonight to move forward with 50% with the proposal going to the board for the other 50%, mm -hmm. um, if that's the desire of the board that way, because we are into springtime and it, the contractor can get, can get going here um, shortly mm -hmm. if that all works. Is there one contractor that is better than the others that you guys have on that from performance and quality mm -hmm. and or what have you? I guess you're making I've never statement. worked yeah I've never worked with Caterberg Verhag I've I know who Epic Excavating is they're the low bid I've never worked with them I talked actually yesterday because we had a pre-construction meeting with our for our pathways project our consultant engineer recently did a fairly large sidewalk project with Epic okay they're a very small shop I think they're like a one crew they they said they were good okay they said they were good any of them local that we know of or the outside of township. Uh, these are all Kitterberg Hague, I think, is local ish. Hanlon's in the area. They're at least they're all over the state, I think. Epic is kind of, I think they're more central Michigan, um, but they certainly do work on the west side here. Um, I know like Kent, Kent Companies is a big concrete shop. Um, I didn't get anything back from them. Um, they're really the only other big concrete shop I can think of, short of finding a like a K and R, but they're not going to do this quality of work or quantity of work. And um, I like the I like the fact that Caterburn for for Hague, they do a ton in the area. They're local mm -hmm. and they're not the high bid, so I like yeah. that. And then I like the low bid and. Yeah, uh, from from uh, my experience as an inspector and an engineer, I I don't think there's going to be a difference between any three of them, but. That said, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, 
I would be confident with any, I would be confident with Epic or Anlon. I've never worked with Caterberg or Hague, so I, don't, I won't speak to them, but I would be confident that the, either the other two could do it. Then they can probably do it too. I'd... We've got $9,000 difference between my two I agree. I agree too. Yep. So to make a motion, we take 50% of say the 88,000 for simplicity. Mm -hmm. So make a motion to approve $44,000 to second. fix the, fix the sidewalks. I'll second. Thank you all. All in favor. Sorry, it's the ice cream. All in favor. <laughs> yeah. Aye. 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 Oh, any opposed? <laughs> Motion is passed. Uh, Article six, the VDRC update, which is the Village Design Review Committee update. Yeah, I can kick it off and then um, hand it over to um, Andrea. So you got quite an extensive <clears throat> packet here to, to take in. In regards to a proposal, there used to be a, a law firm that burnt down. This is um, an old 28th Street. Mm -hmm. So this is them coming back before because they want to rebuild. So I don't know in the past if VDRC has ever come before you and you've been updated on, on what's going on, but I think it's appropriate as it is in the district. Um, the VDRC, <clears throat> if you're not familiar with it, it's a Village Design Review Committee. There was a member from the Planning Commission and there's a member from this board, which is um, Mr. Preston, um, the supervisor, the community planner, and is there someone from ZBA? Yeah, we have um, Ralph Moxley from ZBA and Alan Rowland from the Planning Commission. So uh, when anyone wants to do something in the village or in, uh, in the village area, they have to come and meet before this board, um, this informal board, <clears throat> and they take a look at it from a compliance standpoint, um, just really what we want in the village area, make sure it complies with the zoning. And um, I will say this is the second time they've been before this committee. The first time um, we had lots of conversation. It was a very modern building. Um, I think to describe it best, it looked like a 1980s funeral home to me. That I guess that's the, that's the best way to describe it. So we sent them back to the drawing board and this is what they came back with. Um, so we wanted to show it to you. Um, there's not really any decisions that the board can make, but I just want to, I think it's worthwhile that you guys see, you know, what's being discussed and that there is stuff happening in the DDA more than just once a month. And we sit here and meet, um, on, on this Tuesday and Andrea, I don't know if you want to go more into what was presented and how the conversation went with the property owner. Sure. So the property owner was also, um, at this meeting, which was actually was really helpful because we were able to tell him about some of the work that you're doing and who's quite excited. So I think that we can continue to build relationships between property owners and business owners in the DDA. And the benefit of this meeting is that it was it's a little bit, it doesn't have the teeth that our form-based code will when it's established, but we actually are reviewing design standards. So we're reviewing materials, pitch, where your front door is, connection to other um, adjacent properties. It was a really good exercise, one, to talk to the VDRC and the members of that about what it will look like when we're making decisions for aesthetics in our downtown area. And you can see this is what's nice to have this conversation in a, in a formal or in a setting like this, it's nice because we're pulling that person in, we're able to have the conversation with them, get the buy-in. We actually recently, you know, met with Rishi too about potentially making, you know, his property one of the, um, because of the, of the unique character of his building, using that as a, an example to show how good facade articulation and aesthetics can really um, bring vibrancy to the neighborhood. So this was a good meeting, just to kind of start that process bring some materials. We asked the developer to bring material so we could say, is this, when we finally do adopt our board and base code, is this a material that we want? Jade and I thought about, about it for a while, like one of our staff members, is this, is this what we want? Is this gonna sustain time? You know, are, are these the elements that we want here? And can we justify whether we um, are rigid on our rules or whether there's wiggle room? So I'd encourage you to kind of look through the packet too, because some of the standards 
even though they didn't meet them to the T, we're also trying to build rules that give us the ability to relax rules for appropriate reasons and not just like, hey, we're going to do you a favor, but there's a, a real reason to either enforce that rule or in this case, you know, we said, you know, it doesn't really make sense to pull material right next to an existing forest is going to be maintained where the forest is four feet away from that side of the building. Why would we, you know, put that kind of onus on a property or it just doesn't make sense. So that was helpful, a good help, helpful exercise for us to figure out what we want and how we codify that later. In master plan. I think that makes sense. I think I'm a, as a business owner, I'm a big fan of common sense regulations where, you know, do you, do you, if you see a donkey, do you really need to take it in front of the board and the board certifies it as a donkey and if someone calls it a horse, you know, so I, I think common sense regulations go a long way. And if something, like you said, because the forest was already going to be maintained, you know, then I think it makes sense to overlook that, and especially mm -hmm. if nothing is happening in the back end of the forest. My question was, um, I did take a look at the, the drawing and I know we don't have anything that, that I know of as a DDA that we've said, hey, this is what we want this block to kind of look like or something. And this is, you know, if it comes close to mimicking that, then it's approved. So like the drawing that we have, is that something that you're comfortable with in terms of what we want it to look like? Or is this just a preliminary set of drawings? I think that the BDRC Per the, the standards that we have right now, it complies with that. Yeah. It completely complies. Yeah. Um, and there was a lot of conversation that there was the cottagey feel of this, the pitch roof, the change in um, in some of the facades, the breaking up the facade with windows, adding landscaping, some of the lighting. Those were all elements that were incentivized. Um, but I think more than anything, that's a question for for you guys to have because this is this meets the standards of the rules as they are. Do we like this aesthetic and want to continue this kind of development? We felt like yes, this is you know, this is appropriate for this type of building for a pitched roof. Where that's given that we had just reviewed this, it was good to have a conversation with you, Rishi, because your building is not a pitched roof; it's more of a traditional design. It's already existing. So, you know, there's elements that we can modify your building to get it closer to the facade that we like without, you know, totally changing your building. So Plus one is a, in, a residential, or sorry, one is office, one is commercial yeah. as well. And one thing to, to kind of, it's interesting going through this process because we're kind of somewhat in flux right now too, going through the master plan process and then actually re, um, redefining our zoning within the village, the transition area and the DDA. So it's it's kind of in flux and and it was really hard to go back to them the first time because we really didn't have anything to go off of. But fortunately they got the message and they went back and I should have included an old picture because I think you would be really impressed with how far we came with this. And I was very relieved because we all were kind of like, oh, what are they, what are they gonna bring before us? And so we were happy that this came before us. And again, even if we tweak the code in the future and it's differ it differs from what's being presented it's probably going to be close so style, yeah. right and then i just want to give kudos to andrea real quick because they actually did they never used to do this with this committee they actually did a six page staff review which is included in your packet so it wasn't like we took this lightly and just looked at the pictures we actually did compare it to code so and i think that's really important to know that um because we've learned really quickly that developers and builders in cascade pretty much could come to the table with just about anything they wanted and it was going to be okay so now they're knowing that they're going to have to justify some things and then we're going to maybe push back a little bit i mean we're open for business we definitely want business but we definitely want to make sure we're following the right procedures too so but i thought this was important for you guys to see i like it I think it looks nice. I think it's a great step change on process. Yeah. And what I what I like about this building personally is that if it ever needs to be reused into something else, the look of this, I could see this turned into something else besides just a law office. Mm -hmm. I think it's not, they're not boxing themselves into one particular use. It's a classic look. I like it. Yeah, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. So.
You Nothing to vote on. Okay. It's more of a receipt and file. Okay. For sure. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Yeah, and you. So is, it, is this the process that you plan on going through for every new build in the in the in the village? Be, the, so the village design review committee, I think, was actually established by the board of trustees back in. Oh, it's in our ordinances. Uh -huh. it, I mean, it's it's a it's, mm -hmm. it's existed long before I got here. Yeah. It was just. The formality I mean, in the life. process wasn't really right. adhered to, or there wasn't one. Sure. So we've created one with these. I mean, no. Andrew's done all the legwork on this. So to create this standard is really what's going to be going forward. Yeah. So yes, yeah. this is what we plan on doing. But the the actual yeah. existence of the committee has been around for, I think, since 2019 or 2020. And are there more than the 17 requirements? Or these are the right. these are the basic seventeen requirements, yeah. right. and does does your mold fit into these? Okay. So to speak, yeah. And, okay. and just you know to clarify kind of how it works right now, this is a this committee doesn't have teeth. It's just an appointed board between DBA Planning Commission, ZBA, and the board and staff. So we make recommendations that then can go to the planning commission, but they're not codified. They're not rules right now. Mm -hmm. So this is a good model to use, but as we go through both the form-based code and our administrative process and the zoning administration or the, the zoning ordinance and how we administer it, we'll determine then. And there'll be a lot of feedback to say, you know, is this working the best way? Do we have the right players at the table? You know, are we building good relationships with, with our um, developers and community partners through this process so that we get buy-in from the beginning? Probably. Does it could it be tweaked? Probably, but we'll just determine that throughout the process. So can I ask what um as you talk about the process? I'm 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 this law firm. I want to build the building. Do I go to this committee first and share with them? Mm -hmm. You give feedback. Again, there's no teeth, but you can give feedback to say, you know what, it's probably not going to pass planning if you don't mm -hmm. make these revisions or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Um, and of these 17, again, requirements, these, again, these are all within, of course, the, the planning commission requirements too, because we, that would be stupid. Yep. to send something their way and they're like well, how does this not fit but i'm sure that the planning commission has more than the d17 they do i'm sure so they're they got to get the water retention all yes. that other yep. kind of stuff yep. but this is more aesthetic correct we have the traditional site plan review where we would pull eric in for all of those elements we're looking at um setbacks density all of those things and then with you know a form-based uh code or with facade you know we're looking at actual design that's just an extra piece on top of all the other regulations so they go to design review committee then plan then planning commission for site plan review and then if it requires special land use or something else it may go to the all the way up to the board level but yes the and next how, step will be site planning how often does this design committee meet in order to make sure that again the as a developer, the mm -hmm. process is going to keep moving forward. If you're meeting quarterly, well, I, I can't wait that so, long. Yeah, or is so, it monthly or is it as needed yeah. for applications being made to the plant or to yeah. the- uh, So to it's it meets as needed. And probably the feedback they got from this one, we won't need to meet again with this particular applicant. I think what happened, this is a really good example though, because what they presented the first time we basically told them the same thing that it's not going to go anywhere to your point. Like the planning commission is going to have issues with it. The board's going to have issues with it. So let's save ourselves some time. Want to go back to the drawing board. Madison actually sat down. This is before Andrea started. She sat down with Danielle from McKenna and they met with the architect and the landowner and had that conversation. So then they went back and they developed this. And then when they came back before the committee, it was satisfactory, you know, with some tweaking. But I think the feel leaving this meeting is they don't need to meet again. If they came back with another design, I mean, we still don't have to meet again with them. They can still move forward with the application. But at that point, the VDRC probably would have done a letter to not recommend based upon A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. Again. Kind of like that gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. that yep. If you rubber stamp it, it's going to be way easier getting all the way through the rest. Yeah. Yep. And it should be easier once we have all the design things decided for the right. requirements mm -hmm. that it'll right. be kind of what we want right. overall. I mean, it, it's nice that this project, the timing of it was yeah. now. 
And so that has given us the chance to sort of dry run through mm -hmm. and toss some things out. Um, how, so you were asking about timing. How are we communicating with, or how will we communicate with potential business owners that want to move into the community, build a new building, or or even a substantial update to an existing building? I'm assuming that that falls under the auspices as well, correct? Yeah. Andrea can chime in too, but when when anyone goes to do anything in the township, they start at planning or building department. Yeah. And depending on where they're wanting to build, there's some automatic things that happen first. Yeah. Anything in the village, they're aware of at that point when they meet with staff and they are told about how the process works. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we are um, taking very seriously that I've seen success in the past, and so has Andrea, is not just even if it's in the village, but we want to do design, or I'm sorry, development review committees as a whole. They won't be all about the facade, but we'll bring in fire engineering, the building department, the county if we need to, MDOT if we need to, and then us to make sure that we have a really good feel when someone comes in and said, hey, I want to build a new building. And everybody's gotten a first glance at it to so that we can become aware of some red flags, like right away and say, we know you're going to have to get a traffic study with MDOT. So let's get that started now because it takes some time. Yeah. So we're rewriting that development process, but it's going to happen standard, whether it's in the village or not. Not oh. to make their job harder, but to actually make their job easier by yeah. giving them yep. right. everything they need to do. Up front. Correct. Early in the process. That's why I was asking the yeah. question, because going through the whole process of designing a building architecturally and, and from a design aesthetic standpoint and coming and saying here mm -hmm. and us going, nope, yep. doesn't work. So if they're doing it in the conceptual part of their project, then it's early, right? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Well, yeah. Yes. Like I just went through not a building project, but an Aspen. And at the end, I said, could you have just given me everything at the very beginning? Yeah. You know, to just yeah. stop giving it to me in steps. You yes. Know? Yep. Yeah. And, and that's fair because actually at the end of the day, it makes our jobs easier. <laughs> it really yeah. does. Because yeah. if, if they walk out knowing all the steps and all the requirements and we have it, you know, spelled out for them. I mean, I don't know how much more clear we can get. As a get. consumer, yeah. I was so frustrated. I would think I had everything done and I would be like, here you go. And they'd be like, okay, now you have to do this. Thing. Right. I'd be like, Are you kidding me? Yeah. yeah. You know? Right. Yep. Yeah. But I think, also, build, sorry. Pardon? I think, I think this is also really yeah. business friendly too. I think yeah, it, it engages, yeah. you know, you, you might say that the committee doesn't have teeth, but I think they really do. Right. Because if it's in the, business owners or the property owners best interest to it's a very disarming way for both parties to kind of figure out, Hey, what works, what doesn't, um, because they also then know that that recommendation or actually that the, the non-recommendation is going to go a long way. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I, you're right. It saves a lot of time. Otherwise you submit a plan and you say, well, I don't like this. And you go back and that can cost valuable time. And like you said, a lot of engineering costs and architectural costs and those are, those can, well, most people want to come in and be a, a welcome part of a community and it hundred percent you know they want to be well received and mm -hmm. get along and that's a good way to start versus being at odds because yep. you've been fighting about design the whole way through because they don't realize they came to you with something you didn't like well and then historically what they idea. do is they get in front of the planning commission and then it becomes this back and forth between the planning commission and the petitioner and I've seen it happen, and that is just that's that's not good for anybody, and that it, it looks bad on a lot of fronts. So I was going to say, I think that this this process is going to not only help build relationships with mm -hmm. again as a uh, as a township that uh, wants to work and is welcoming businesses, and I think uh, as a developer, as we talk about all these benefits, as a developer, um, you know. Uh, as they may talk to other individuals, say Cascade Township is great to work with. They're going to help you through the process as compared to slapping you on the hand when you get in front of that planning commission. Mm -hmm. And they're just, and then again, uh, all the negatives we talked about. So yeah, really be a selling point to, to, to people whoever in. put this plan together. Um, I think it's fantastic. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, the committee's Great. existed, but the rest of it's all Andrea. So. Are you finding businesses are at first kind well, you've only yeah. dealt with I'm assuming this is Tom Kuiper who it is okay yeah. who's like local around here yeah. okay yeah. 
I mean, he's if he's the only one, but I'm wondering if businesses at first will be a little bit not trusting that you're really got their best interest at heart and a little bit like they're, you know, but we'll, they we'll learn, get that. Yeah. You'll get that for sure. Yeah. yeah, sure. It's word of mouth. I think that'll spread yeah. fear. It's a small community, it spreads pretty fast. Yeah. And, and like I said, right now there's. Cascade is trying to work yeah. with us. Yeah. It's trying to yeah. help us. And I think right now, because there's so many moving parts with the master plan and the creation of the form based code and the village, you know, what's going to happen in the village area and all that concentration, there's a lot going on that shows that there's support for this and that, you know, we're trying to do as much education as possible to hopefully, you know, deter some of that friction. One more, one more question. As you were just talking about creating this master plan, and then we're going to be making some revisions to plan uh, the um, ordinances and whatnot. I've, I, I, as a business developer, have gone through, so to speak, the first steps and met this group, and you kind of said, yes, this is great. And during that same time, all these other things are going on, and now there's some changes being made. Have you thought through how that's going to work in a respect of, hey, this this person's already started the process. We're not going to get to step eight, be, and we've made some changes, and now we say, sorry, you got to go back to step one again. Are we going to, so to speak, grandfather them to a certain degree and say, yes, we're gonna we're gonna continue to flow through because we've you've already put in four months and we changed the rules on you in mid game. So the way that we handle that is with provisions within our ordinance within the process that say minor modifications, including this, 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 and this, or I would say, you know, for example, you have a building that needs to be modified on the site, and then you go to and find out from stormwater that you can't have this here. You might say, you can change the location of your building within 10% of the original location administratively or we'll approve this contingent on. Mm -hmm. So yes, we're aware of that. And we're hoping that by the time you get to planning commission one, that you haven't invested, you know, 40, 50, $60,000 in, in mechanical engineering, all of these structural permits, but you'll be done with your site plan elements. And then those modifications that might change because of something you find out with building can be administratively approved. And that the, the decision makers, whether it be planning commission, you, if you're involved in the process, understand that there'll be some wiggle room and you have to trust the staff, but we'll, we'll make sure that everything is, is recorded along the way. Is that? No. Yeah. And I, and I think one of the things that we're in, and this can be based upon, we're just being really transparent with anyone that comes to the counter too. So we're being very open and upfront with them and coming in with, Hey, Here's our draft master plan. Here's the strategic plan that was that the board approved two years ago. Here's the so they know it. So even if they say, well, it's not zone, it's not today, but it's it's coming. So I'm still going to apply under these, you know, the premise of this ordinance. We've let them know. So as it gets through that process, and we're making sure that we notate all of that. So mm -hmm. yeah, I there was there was some talk um as to how we were going to handle that if something came through. And actually, this particular um example is one where we're like, ooh, how do we handle this so that we can kind of, you know, tap the brakes a little bit until we get all of this redone. Yeah. Luckily, they were receptive to go back to the drawing board. Okay, just part of it, too, was explaining the concept. Mr. Kuypers, by the time that we were done, understood that this was in his best interest for the value of his property, because we said, well, you know, we're going to hold you to this standard, but if your neighbor comes in and we give them arbitrary, you know, exceptions, and all of a sudden you're looking at a blank wall, you know, you're not going to be happy with us on that. So we're not going to be arbitrary, but he recognized right away it's just going to be in his best interest because everybody would be held to that standard that developed in his area from here on out. It's going to help property values and vitality, and that's good for everyone. So that was, yeah. Appreciate it on his. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Um, moving on to article seven, the calendar bar chart discussion. Jay, do you want to talk about this or, I mean, I can talk about how we sort of started out with this. Sure. And then I can kind of go yeah, through what's in the, how bucket. this came together. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we were talking about the fact that there are things that happen on an annual basis within the DDA that we have to make decisions on and, 
Um, there, there's a timeline with some of those things. And so could we create something that's like a calendar that reminds us and, and so for being planful about the business that we conduct, that we know those things are coming up. You know, we know we have to discuss budget every year. We know that there are some projects that are sort of annual projects that we need to address. So um, we talked about creating this sort of visual communication tool to do that. Yep. So actually, Jessica in the back um, created the what's in your packet for you. So the first one shows you what historically it, it's what's been done in the past that was on the agenda. Um, and you can see like the dash is when it was either um, it was discussed at a plan, at a DDA meeting. Um, and then the actual month is actually when it or the large box is when it actually occurred. So um, what we did is we took that and then we we took all of the items that we see on an annual basis. And, and keep this in mind, this is a working document. This is always going to be changing. We can always change the format. We can change the items, the topics that are on here. So then when she did the future draft one, um, I feel weird talking about you when you're sitting in the back of the room, but <laughs> um, when we did the future one, we actually put some items on here to what the actual item is. Like, do you vote on it? Do we start to talk about it? Do we execute it? Do we evaluate it? What is what is that we need to do in regards to that particular item? And there are going to be some things that we don't need to take a lot of action on, like the annual report. You should all expect an annual report in March every year from me, right? And then, you know, election of officers, that always happens in January. But when you go down to, we can look at flower pots. Um, you know, this may change into landscaping as a whole, but, you know, we've got a discussion, we send out an RFP, we vote on awarding the contract, and we can change these months if they don't jive with what we're seeing is working. And then we evaluate the summer flower pots, give feedback, and then evaluate the fall flower pots, and then um, evaluate the in the winter on the for those flower pots. So, you know, there's different ways to use this. I, I guess it's more of a calendar graph in my mind. I'm not really sure what to call it. But, and these are some of the common um, items that have come up in the DDA over the last few years that she went through and found and put um, into the uh, into the scale. And you can see there's a word draft on this. So definitely looking for feedback, even if we don't get it tonight. Um, if there's a different layout that you want, we're not going to be offended. But I do I see the value in making sure that we have some sort of um, process to follow and saying, OK, yep, here's our snapshot. Wow, we have a really big I mean, if you look at this, September is kind of busy. There's a lot of things that we need to make sure that we're touching on in September. So we need to make sure that we're prepared to go through all of those things in September. And that was one of the things I picked up when she gave me this. I'm like, oh, we're pretty busy in September. Like, well, what are we doing there? So yeah, August and July are. Dead. Right. That's if right. we meet. A lot of times it gets canceled. Oh. That's so it's, I mean, what I've seen in the past years. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that could be true. And maybe we look at some of this as we start to plan new things. Like, okay, you know, we, we have time in May. We don't really do anything as like a spring event or we don't concentrate anything in, in May. Is there something we want to do to, to do that? I don't know. So we can use this also to kind of do a snapshot of like where we have the ability to, to maybe look at some things. And goals, projects, maybe like after we do the master plan, kind of the check-ins and mm -hmm. tweak anything, that kind of thing. Yep. Yeah. So definitely looking for feedback on this. Um, it's phenomenal. I mean, I I love it. I think that the glaring thing to me is there are some things I think we spend a little too much time on, to be completely honest. If we think about what adds value, um, I know the flower pots are really important and they look great, but I think we can look at the share of time we're investing in something and what the return is to the DDA. So I think we we should, I would suggest that we have like a, a, dis, a discussion at some point about what do we want to focus our time on? And when it comes to goals and objectives, I'm, I'm a big believer on a quarterly basis, you need to weigh, are you, are you arriving to the places you, on time and are you achieving the goals that you want? Um, the, the other thing I would say is different parts of the DDA have distinctly different needs. What the, the, the downtown, what we call downtown, the village area of what we're trying to create has distinctly different needs than say, hey, where my business is at, where crime is a concern. And how does that fit into it to make sure we're balancing the needs of, because the DDA spans across 
a large swath of area with distinctly different needs. So I think as, as we look at this at 30,000 feet, it's like, awesome. Mm -hmm. Let's evaluate. And then maybe we, how do, what's the cadence on a couple things that may not be fully addressed? Actually, you just hit on something. Mm -hmm. No, the c crime is above and then it disappears on the, the future drill. Yeah. And yeah. also the village, like talking about the village. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, you hit on something that I think as we're looking at this will change because I think we should actually could color code some of these things too, to be if they're in the village, the transition area, or if they're on yeah. mm -hmm. like the 28th, the, I guess I'll call it the corridor and let's mm -hmm. call it, but we can identify that too to say, okay, we're not really spending much time over in the corridor area. We need to actually spend some resources that way and, and take it down there. So I, I think we can color code this too to come up with something different. And, and there was always a running joke of we're talking about the Christmas tree lights again. Mm -hmm. And so I think we could probably streamline <laughs> that that process. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love the evaluation idea too. And maybe like a scorecard type of thing. Like what are we measuring? What's the metrics? Mm -hmm. Have we had the impact? And we certainly need to prioritize like to understand which which things to take more priority over other things to your point about then how much time do we spend on them? Yeah. And, and I have a question, I guess, to clarify, because we use the word topics, but I think with what I'm hearing, there's actually events slash items that we need to like take action on and work towards. Like there, it takes a different effort to put on an event or to drive people into like the village area. If you're going to draw areas so that versus discussion topics like crime mm -hmm. or policy type issues. So, mm -hmm. I'm wondering if we somehow differentiate that here too, because mm -hmm. that, that should be, I think they're two different things where you're going to yeah. have an event, Agreed. maybe subcommittee or something that works on a different calendar mm -hmm. that's going to do a lot more planning as opposed to my annual report shouldn't be on something where we're talking about, you know, doing the next heritage festival. Yeah. Like they don't really there's, jive. There's some categorization that yeah. we need to look. So at. we can, we'll go back. I like this conversation. So I'll, we'll go back and, and tweak it some more. I do love your idea of somehow being able to measure mm -hmm. because what you measure is like what you can do good at. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how we're going to And to your point, some areas might have different measurements like okay. the crime. Right. Mm -hmm. Scorum. I mean, like I never knew people complained about the sidewalks. I have bad sidewalks, it looks like, but I don't ever walk on them, so I have no idea. You know? and, and some things are more easily scored than others. You know, it might be really difficult to score some things, but maybe we can find at least some way of some evaluation. I think it would be interesting to know what are the complaints the, the you know, the township is hearing about the village core and mm -hmm. can we... Could be surveys, like, do you... Yeah, like if you guys yeah. are getting complaints, like, that's a measurable yep. item. <laughs> and, and we can definitely bring that forward for sure. How do you solve that now? Yep. Yep. That's so much for them, but... You know, I mean, that's something you can measure, reducing those. Mm -hmm. And I think there's also just visual updates of our biggest projects, as we say, Friendship Park, um, what we're doing with the bridge. You, in my past life, we would just use for simplicity for everyone to be on the same page, traffic lights. Is the, if, the, if it's a green light, everything's mm -hmm. going still as planned. You got a yellow light, new problems have come up, red light, we're at a full stop. Mm -hmm. And so even if we don't, touch on it it's just like hey when we were at the meeting we were still in the yep. green light on our core good. big investment projects and then as we get into just holistically of what who we are as a dda there are some metrics that can say are we healthy how many vacant buildings do we have how many there's some things if so we have leading into cares like mm -hmm. if i was a business i'm watching my traffic my net sales my my margin that don't have to be discussed every time, but are in nope. the agenda. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I was going to talk about it when I get to my um, update that I'm, I envision that taking on a different look moving forward that would include more of something that gets formally presented to you on a monthly basis that could then incorporate not only a progress and calendar, yeah. like our calendar and where we are on certain things, but then also the progress. And if you're green, red, or yellow, we can yeah. incorporate that for sure. Okay. And when it's like in a yellow or red, it means it means to be on the agenda something has happened right yep green is we're, let's go keep going great <laughs> Any other? okay so we'll we'll tweak this some more and and i'll probably just send out another one i mean i don't know that we need to wait, wait a whole month 
just to see. And then if you guys have any comments, just send them back to us great. and we'll try and formalize another one um, by next month. Perfect. Love it. Great thinking. Uh, nice job, any Mr. other comments on? Nope. We'll move on to article eight, the goals and priorities discussion. So this was uh, actually, this came out a couple of years ago and it was really more about creating a framework for almost a charter of how we do our work within the, the, the DDA. And um, some of the things, I mean, some of them are talking about priorities. How do we prioritize those things that are most important that, you know, business that we need to attend to projects you know, whatever those, and there, there are, I mean, some things are policy, some things, some things are policy within the board in terms of um, even how we look at when, when we know we're going to need to fill spots, what is it that we're looking for, you know, or that, that there's a need to fill. Um, and obviously, you know, some, somebody makes that decision, but I think we can have some discussion about just in terms of, you know, the board members, if we see that we're lacking some experience or skill set or something like that, that we can have that discussion. Um, a lot of it refers to um, obviously following what's in the strategic plan and then um, assessing what the priorities are for the projects and everything that we're you know, looking at tackling like over the next year helps us put some planning together and what we feel like are the sort of short, medium and long range projects or efforts that we wanna put together. This also is, and we've, I've talked to Jade about this, when, oh, and he's working on some onboarding process things, so that when somebody joins the board, we can give them a packet of information or deliver it to them digitally that helps them understand how we do these things and what we're focused on and all of that sort of thing. So it's something, cause we, we don't really have anything right now. You know, a framework you just, to- you, you get asked to join the board and then you show up to the first meeting, you have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> what is going to come at you? And if you have never been in a public forum before, as people make motions, you're just kind of like, all right, follow the leader, right? Um, I think it makes, it's huge it, for people. They like to know what they're walking into. Yeah. So, I mean, this was totally a rough draft, a straw man, if you will, of what does this thing look like? And it's not by any means complete or... And so it's another thing for all of you to look at and give feedback on and comment, we don't have this and we this needs to be on here, whatever that is, so that we have, we, you know, we actually have, you know, do create along with the bylaws that we'll have. And, um, and then, like I said, this is almost like a charter for us in the work that we do. Questions, comments. So, what is the next step? What is what is what is happening? With you, you all get to look at it. Okay. You to review <laughs> right. and okay. comment, feedback, and I mean, this is nothing that you know. Right now, we've got all the positions filled, and um, you know, it, this is just really working on these things so that again, we've got some solid framework around what we do, how we do it. Yeah, I think process would help yeah, me a lot. <laughs> and process, then, yeah. If you think of like stuff too, you could have more subcommittees and then a right. few coming together then presenting to the group. So it's, we're not all deciding, you know, I don't know, maybe a little more structured that way, but. I think this is awesome. This is great new thinking. And I've, I've been on a couple boards and there was one that I just joined recently and they had an onboarding meeting where I got to meet all the different moving pieces of the organization so that when I joined the board meeting, the first board meeting, I sat in on one before I um, before I joined. 
And then I led into joining the board and that, but I knew who, what the working pieces were, what the objectives and goals are, where the budget was at, um, what the formalities of how this board likes to operate. Um, so when I joined that first meeting, I felt like I was kind of flying at cruising altitude as opposed to a, a rocky launch or takeoff. So I think this makes a big, big difference. And I think there's also just setting the ground rules. If you're going to participate in this, what are the expectations? And so that you are, because we manage a decent sized budget here. So what are the ground rules so that we're successful in being good stewards of the money that's been entrusted to us? So I love it. It's very clear and it's public, right? Yeah. Is there a, is there a place where all of the old minutes are kept or a copy of the budget is kept that we can all access at any point? Mm -hmm. So the archived uh, minutes are on the website. Mm -hmm. And then as far as the old budgets, yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, the yeah. um the budgets I believe are also housed on the yep. on the website, they but are. we can always we have those archived yeah. too at Top Chapel. Yeah, I, you know, I I think to Michelle's credit, and and I I think this is something that needs to be done. I I can't speak to what happened prior to me getting here, but I can say I was just talking about this board earlier with with some people at the staff, mm -hmm. and um I enjoy coming to this meeting with because you guys are really engaged, but I can also tell. To your point, there was, probably was no onboarding in the past. And I know we've got a couple new members this year, but we are working in that process and they can't just do it overnight. But I think that onboarding and knowing exactly this is your goal, this is what, you know, although you're still volunteers, this is what the goal is of this board. And do you support it? And at that point, you can say, yeah, I'm on board or I'm not, not just, yeah, I'll sit in that seat. So I think there's some validity to that. And because I think everybody's time is valuable. Um, and I, I appreciate, you know, what you've let happen in the last six months as we continue to move forward with this DDA vision that I think it's, it's good. And this is a good next step to solidify so that we clearly have those goals moving forward. When I looked at Michelle's information, I looked at a lot of this and I think some of this is going to naturally occur because I think we are, we're operating in a more transparent, more, um, I, I think we're a little bit more aggressive in what we're doing in the DDA and, and I think some of this is going to come out and it's going to be, we're going to have to talk about some of these things and why it actually follows, you know, what a DDA should be doing or shouldn't be doing and how we can, you know, continue to move forward with projects to make the DDA vibrant. And that's from end to end. So, um, so and yeah. One, one part of this, because we, you know, when we've talked about it in some meetings and, and um, one part of it is really about helping or being more demonstrative about how we talk about the DDA within the community, because a lot of people don't know what the DDA is, what they do, well, how we do it. And so helping that communi you know, communication to your point about projects and all the things that we do that we're working on, that, you know, looking forward, what's coming down the road, um, because I think it's, it's it's helpful for the residents of the community and the business owners of the community to understand, oh, so this is what they're working on. And, you know, if, if we can't get them to come to us, we'll just keep pushing it out to help them understand and see what the vision is and, and how we're doing it. This is great, I think. I think even like, Going back to the scorecard stuff too, that's something we can share with the public too, like to go mm -hmm. to prove that mm -hmm. hey, we are making exactly. an impact, we're following what we're saying yeah. we're doing kind of thing. Yeah. Well, and, and to Scott's point, there's a fair amount of money that we administer yeah. through the DDA. And so I think it's really helpful for people to understand how we're doing that and, and what the benefit is of it. Mm -hmm. Hopefully... For the business owners Businesses to are understand, to I I'm one of those, and yeah. it's good to know like this is where the dollars are going, yeah. right? And that it's going towards meaningful things that are going to ensure that this is going to remain a vibrant business district. Yeah, are these meetings recorded? Mm -hmm. Yes. So lean into the microphone. <laughs> we can all hear you. <laughs> oh. 
Um, so yes, the, it's just review, comment, feedback, um, so that we can get something, this sort of document finalized so that we have it as part of our charter and then to help anybody coming on board. And we are standardizing this onboarding for all boards and commissions in the township. So look for that, even though you are all established, we're still going to go through the, the practice and the process. Each one will be tweaked specifically to the board. But as far as like the basic township information, like you said, meeting the um, everybody within the, the organization, the corporation that you're on the board from now, you should know what happens in the parks department. You should know what happens in finance. So almost like Cascade 101. We'll have everything in there on what each department's responsible for and how, because okay. somehow it affects yeah. the DDA, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's the businesses or you as a board. So all of that is going to be comprehensive in this onboarding. And that helps to remove the silos that we've talked about. Yeah. Perceived or real, right? Yep. And that we've spoken about. Mm -hmm. So we may have to connect our line with whatever other. Yeah. 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 Okay. Moving on to Article 9, staff updates. You're on deck again, Jade. All right. Um, I'm actually going to go a little out of order because I wanted to show you this because I know I'm going to get the question and we've been working hard on it, but then we pit we pivoted and we decided that we we're going to do something different. Um, we are creating, a, actually Jessica is creating a page on the website is going to be completely dedicated to projects within the township, nice. not just the DDA, but all projects because we've got a lot going on. Um, I can't, I took, I stole it from Traverse City, I will be honest, because they have a great interactive page that's always updated. You can see what's active with pictures, how much it costs, who's funding it, and, and details about it. So I, I'm going to, we didn't get a chance to, because um, she was working on it today. I have this, I'm going to pass around. But the first few pages kind of shows you as you drill down through this project page, the one we're starting with is the village, because we want to get communication up on Tuffy or on the Tuffy location in regards to what's going on with that building. But when we started talking, we said, you know, there's so much going on in the village that it should be a part of that. So I'll let you guys kind of look at this as if you're going through the website for the first pages. Mm -hmm. And then the last page is a, is a draft version of the sign. It's going to be about 20 feet long. It's bigger than the one at the library. That's going to go on the Tuffy, Tuffy grounds. You know, I like signs. I know you do. So within the next couple of weeks, and actually, as we're sitting here talking, I noticed that we did not put downtown development authority on it. So we'll be incorporating that as well. Great. But that's the last page is assigned. The first five or so are the website. So, um, okay. and then you'll know, like when you see the first page, which has the village project on it, um, there'll be one for the Burton Street Bridge. There'll be one for our road projects. There'll be one for Friendship Park. There'll be one for... Um, there's all, we, we went through a list. We got about 10 of them. <laughs> so, and it's going to be, as we move through them, we'll be able to update them. Nice. And then we'll be able to send people right to the website to get all of these current updates. So you guys time too. Yeah. And actually, I think it actually puts a little accountability too. When we talk about our contractors to say, yeah, we're going to do it this year. Like the bridge, like the Cascade Road Bridge, that's mm -hmm. going to be part of the village. You know, that one, we still don't have a date, but they keep saying 25. And I'm like, public knows it i need to know so yeah. um i'm sorry 24 i did yeah. not mean to speak there so um so anyway so that's kind of what we've been working on from a project perspective and again it's draft form but it'll be on the website um we're hoping to have that go live within two weeks because i want the the sign up at Tuffy. well this kind of takes care of i think scott's question in terms of that uh yeah as you said the accountability piece mm -hmm. but also the gauging of how how are we doing against the goals of, mm -hmm. again we're talking dda but right I mean, mm -hmm. again we're part of the the yep. entire township and yep and what's happening and so being able to see this progress um, yeah. would be would be great um and i would encourage in there too um you know and we've talked about it a couple of times as far as new businesses that have opened up within yeah. the the township yep. um from update to update okay. kind of thing um just again to encourage people to patronize those businesses yep. so that they can stay vibrant yeah. and stay i talked to andrea about that and we there's not really an economic development page right now on the website. So we want to recreate that. And then to your, Michelle, you were talking earlier and it reminded me too, I want to create, like to work with all of you to create a very distinct logo for the downtown development authority, as opposed to just cascade. It is a, it is an arm of the, of the township, mm -hmm. but it also is very unique in what it's supposed to do. So we want to make it very recognizable, especially as we start to do more things in the village. So 
I think um, it'd also be nice to have like a whole list of all the businesses in Cascade, like all of Cascade, and maybe be able to have them have like, I don't know, an event that's going on at their business at some point in time. Like a business directory. Yeah. Or yeah. like I go on, like I actually go on a Cascade's calendar and Ada's calendar like every other month to make sure like if something's going on in either of those places I get it on my calendar so I can I don't know like if there's like a girl's night out my daughter and I'll go and it's hard to find on Cascades when there's yeah going, like I don't care about the metro like for me I don't care about the metro groups but like my daughter and I go to like girls night out and back mm -hmm. in Ada and like you can't find that yeah. at Cascade. well and a lot of it doesn't night. exist yet so those are some of the things that we're hoping to yeah. exist yeah, I'd like to so yeah, all right, let's do it. Like we go downtown Grand Rapids. We go downtown. Yeah. Ada, like I find those things, and I'll be like, "Hey, it's Thursday night. Downtown Grand Rapids is yep. having like sip and shop. Let's go." Yeah, because we're booked. It could yep. probably be connected with the socials too. Like I follow a Cascade one. I always look at that. There could probably be things that we add to that. Yeah, like and it'd be nice just as a business to be like be able to be like jump on easily and add something you're doing that maybe the rest of us would be like, "Oh, I'd go to that with my kid," or you know. Yeah. And I, um, I think with this, the initiative that you're doing, we almost club people over their head with it or continue like Cascade Connections, you know, they have Facebook posts, yes. you got to just, and just the regular old signs that go up, but you just, people get, consume information in such different ways, and then they don't change their habits. Yes. And, so, and I do grab it. So I, yeah. I just hijack you. Yeah. No, so you're you bring you're good. Point. You're good. Um, what do you have on there? So the next item, I'll try and go through these somewhat quickly. So Friendship Park, quick update. Um, we are way ahead of schedule on that project. That's awesome. Uh, grand opening right now is scheduled for June 29th. I don't have the date yet. It's Saturday. So, um, and it has to be open that week because we have all of the 4th of July festivities already scheduled and contracted for the grounds. So, but they're making great strides out there. And um, surprisingly, we, we did get the grant from for the right place. And I got a call from Tim Mraz who wanted to bring by a few people to see the project. And he ended up bringing a bus with 15 legislatures and representatives from the MEDC um, yesterday. Nice. So w I had no idea who to expect and all these people started coming off this bus. And so I told them, I'm like, you didn't prepare me for this, but, um, <laughs> but it was a great, we were able to talk about it. It was, it was great. And everybody and was really able to excited. get it out on Facebook right away too. And it, yes. that, was, that was great. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so the good things are happening out there. So continue to watch it. And now they're getting to the fun stuff. Like you're going to start seeing the bricks laid and you're, the plants are going to start coming in. So it's going to get, it's going to get exciting. I mean, it already is. Um, I did talk to um, Omar at the sheriff's office and we are getting him on the calendar to come and present. I'm hoping to do that in the May at the May meeting. So he'll be here to present on that. Um, and that kind of goes right in line with the next topic, which is the hotel. Can I ask one oh, yeah. thing when Omar does come in to mm -hmm. give, he spoke generally last time, if he's able to provide trend lines, like are we seeing an increase, decrease in certain categories? Oh, for sure. Yeah, that would be for me, at least that would be really helpful. That's interesting you say that because he should be able to pull a report because I've been working and pushing him for months to track some information in regards to the hotel issues that we're having. And he had to work with the IT department at the county to create a different report. So now I can ask for something in regards to Cascade and he can go in and basically create it himself. So I think he should be able to do that easily. So I will, That's awesome. um, I will ask him that and let him know. Um, for those of you that don't know, I know Scott does, and we've been talking about it for months, but um, we are introducing a hotel licensing ordinance in Cascade. Uh, we've, I've been working with the sheriff's office, the police department, and our legal counsel and the board of trustees in creating this ordinance because we're seeing a lot of our public safety activity is going to the hotels and then to the um, senior living facilities. The hotels can be completely controlled because there's some activity that's happening in those in the hotels and there are some um common there, there's four or five of the hotels that are probably the biggest um uh what's the word jessica vendors. offenders that's a good word <laughs> um offenders and and have some activity going on that is just not what we want in the community so um presented a work session to the board last week of a very lengthy um 
a lot of data went into this because we're pretty sure that the ordinance will be challenged by the hotel owners, but it's something that needs to be done. So that ordinance, and if you're in support of it, um, is going before the board for its first reading on next Wednesday at seven o'clock. Um, so it's gonna require like, uh, hotels to actually get a license. Uh, we have 16 hotels in Cascade Township, which is a lot for a community this size. I know the airport's here, but that's a lot. And so when you have that many, it definitely is bringing in behaviors that we just don't want. Mm -hmm. um, next one is lions and rabbits. And I'll, I'll let Michelle help with this one too. So we met with this very dynamic um, woman who's the, the uh, director of this organization called Lions and Rabbits. And they're really about community development, but through art. And so Michelle had organized this meeting with um, Actually, Andrea. Andrea. Oh, or, organized yeah, Andrea organized it. Organized it. She's yeah. known her for a long time, but Michelle was there, myself and Grace. And we had a discussion about how we can incorporate public art into the DDA specifically, or I mean, into the township, but really it's going to be in the DDA and um, in, in the whole corridor. It doesn't have to be just in the village, but how that is actually a driver and it's proven for placemaking to get people into a corridor by drawing interest through public art. She has a lot of ideas. She's open to a lot of ideas. Um, so I don't know, Michelle, if you want to add more. I just want to let everybody know that we have another component, another tool that we can utilize in the district to kind of to drive more attention to our district. The, the great thing about the work that they do, and I think we all learned this in this meeting, is that really their focus is on sort of um, collaboration between even between communities. But what that does then, oh, and by the way, She's very well connected with a lot of people and a lot of other organizations. So when we talk about grants and um, philanthropic support and the whole idea of you know partnership with development and private uh, public private funding and um, she has a really good understanding of that. And really, the art is just kind of the catalyst that or the thread that holds it all together. Um, but it also helps with, and, and she's really focused on placemaking. So how do you use these, all of those tools, people, funding, to you know create that bigger, more holistic vision um, of the things that we're just trying to do in this community with the village area and, and those extended, but particularly in the in the DDA, just in the district. Yeah, she's currently working with Ada. Um, they actually have an arts council or creating one. Yes. So yeah. we're a little behind, but um, she's gone through a couple, and I don't have all of the data, and nor do I have any. Pre she didn't come with any presentations, but she said they do some interesting things where they they talk to people, and people don't even know, especially on the border, whether they're in Cascade or in Ada, and people that actually live in Ada, I think they're in Cascade and vice versa. Yeah. So she says it would really make sense to collaborate on some sort of, you know, art between the two yeah. communities. I know yeah. we we really want to stay distinct, but also it could be a continuity right. for our businesses to know, oh, we've got this art trail or art whatever that comes from Ada mm -hmm. down to Cascade and they end up here and you do a, you know, an event. So you are driving people to, you know, different, you know, businesses in both communities and art is the driver. So um, it was really interesting to talk to her, but I came out of it very well connected, could be very beneficial. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that we're gonna meet on next week and more details to come, trying to figure out what to do with Tuffy too in the meantime, before we demo it, I did pitch the idea if she has some artists that are looking for a temporary house to do some very cool art creation, we could open the garage doors, clean up the outside a little bit they would do all of it. So she's very interested in that. She already reached back out to me. So we're going to meet to right. see how they could temporarily do some things there. And we could draw some excitement to the, to the corridor or to the, you know, the DDA for free. We have nothing, we don't have to do anything. So, um, so more to come, but it was a pretty interesting conversation and, and her company is called lions and rabbits. Yeah. I have no idea how it, as we call that. There, but. there is, there is something behind that, but I don't remember. I read about it 
a while ago, but there is some meaning behind that. Are they the ones who are behind a lot of those initiatives where you turn like electrical box into a piece of art yep. or a um, yes. in a garage downtown Grand Rapids, the a public one, the, yeah, the toll the, booth or whatever. Yep, the, the, the sewer ticket, covers, the, the yeah. Right. Yep, yeah. That's, yeah. That's most of that is her. Great. Yep. That's her. Yeah. So that there's a lot of, I think, yeah. research and proven cases where yeah. it's really positively impacted communities. Yeah. She's pretty passionate about it. Yeah. Um, that's great. The next item on here is the village concept update. I know it's been a while since I've mentioned it, but it's kind of been, there hasn't, I haven't had a lot of um, activity on that because we've been doing a lot of um, getting the information to OHM as far as the utilities, GIS, all of the infrastructure. Um, so they have all that information. We got that to them three or four weeks ago. So they're mapping all that out. We do have our stakeholders meeting um, next week where they're gonna come in and, and kind of look at, we had talked about creating the stakeholder group. So we've got um, people from, uh, we've got developers on there. We've got uh, local businesses, Michelle's sitting in on it. We've got elected officials and staff that are all gonna be um, there. Actually, I invited Hannah yesterday because she was so, she, I think she gets it. So I asked her to join as well. Um, so we'll see how that goes. So after that meeting next week, we'll have more to report on the concept update um, at the next meeting, but very much looking forward to that. And before I get into bylaw um, discussion, I wanted to touch on one other thing. Um, the board did hold a closed session, um, and this is kind of backwards, but I think it's definitely something that we want to consider from the DDA's perspective. But for any of you that are familiar with the stone house on Orange Avenue that was on the market, mm -hmm. um, the board did um, ask me to go and, and negotiate a sale on that to take possession of that property. Um, which they did accept the offer. Um, it is in the DDA district. I think it's going to be, uh, you know, a, a big uh, attraction for the for the downtown, the village. Um, don't know what to do with it, though, because we did have some inquiry at the township from people buying it and they wanted to add on to it or they wanted to take part of it down. I can tell you that the original structure, the stone part, not the two parts on the end that were added on, that's the original house from the late 1800s, early 1900s. Mm -hmm. And we were able to obtain a picture, which I forgot to bring with me tonight, of it sitting there on the hill all by itself. Mm -hmm. There was nothing else around it, mm -hmm. and it was overlooking the river. So I think as we look forward to the, you know, reimagining this downtown and or the village and what that looks like, this is going to be a key property. So um, that is something that we're working through the purchase on that. That's pretty um, cool. Yeah. 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 So I, I think, and as you know, as as we work through, the reason I wanted to jump it, put it here, is because I think that's going to be key to the design of the concept of what they come up with and what we look at as the concept for the village area. Because if you look at it from an aerial perspective, it's really it's really in a weird position, and there's some cross access between the shopping plaza, and then also down Orange Avenue. But Cascade Roadhouse owns the dirt part of that one parking lot. It's really, it's really kind of wonky back there. I'm not sure how it ever got to be the way that it is. Y you know, <laughs> wonky is a, is a good word, right? So we're seeing how how that could, you know, really be a key feature in the in the village area. Um, so I'm positive that the board will have me bring back a proposal for funding on that. <laughs> but we'll we'll talk about that next. And then the bylaw discussion. I actually owed you guys draft bylaws this month and we did not hit our target. So we will have those for you in May. <laughs> we're there, we're almost there. It just weren't quite ready to present tonight for everyone's review. And so if we get those done, what I may end up doing is getting the draft out to you guys and have just getting it in front of you. And if you have time to review it and make comments, um, that'll help our conversation in May. And I think that's all the updates that I have. Oh, just one more thing. So everything that I go through, I realize that I go through a lot of information and I try and keep it high level, but sometimes there's more detail. So this update, although it's it could be from me, it could be from Andrea, it could be from Jessica, but we're going to put this in a much more readable document that can actually just be received by the board every month, especially because we're moving forward on some pretty big projects. And this goes right in line with the conversation we had earlier with progress what's green lighted, what's red lighted, where are we in danger? You know, you can actually see, you know, we'll be able to put in this update 
where are we at with the cat with the pedestrian bridge? You know, it's green lighted. We're still here at this, you know, this point. Or oh, the county just threw us a wrench. This is where we're at. It's not really anything we can do. But here's what's going on with the project. So I think to memorialize my updates, I think that's and I don't know how it was done in the past, but I think I'm going to memorialize that in a document that can be received every month um, with your packet. That's good. Yeah. Thanks for all your work on the hotel ordinance. I think that's a really awesome project. I think the work has just begun. Yeah. <laughs> no, I get it, but it's it's worth. Yeah, effort. I do it, agree. It, it and and the, the good thing is, is the sheriff's office is 100% on board. I met with both Omar and Kate, and from an enforcement standpoint, they're going to be the ones to enforce it and work with the hotels. And so, the hotels know it's coming by now. They do not. They'll That's why I mean our work is our work is just because um, if they pay attention to the packets, <laughs> so they should know it's coming based upon some of the activity that we're seeing. If you ever want to really, you want some entertainment, just sit at home with a glass of wine and read the Google reviews. Oh, Ooh. yeah, they're they're good. They're good. And just having a business there for seven years and the stories that we have. Yeah. Um, it is unbelievable what does go on. And he's right near one of the biggest offenders. Yeah. Probably the and, biggest offender, I think. And County, to their credit, is always responding there, being very um, supportive of the businesses to make them feel safe. And especially if you have a business with associates who are typically in their um, late teens to early 20s, um, it, it's a safety concern. Yeah. In, no matter your age, um, but especially people who we employ. And I don't know if anyone um, pays attention to some of the legislat legis legislation that's been passed recently, but specifically for Wayne or for Kent County, they passed a new law. The governor signed it yesterday morning um, on a lodging tax. Usually it, you can't do that at the local level. They have now allowed that at the local level. Okay. It has to go before the voters, mm -hmm. but I am, I've already had two of my board of trustees contact me to say, we need to continue to look at this. Because as I said, it's 16 hotels that we're looking at in the community. And it's not a tax on the residents because it's all users that are coming from out of town. So I, there'll be more discussion on that too. But is the, is not that additional tax to be used towards like the new soccer stadium? Um, they wrote it well. Yes, it, it is to be used. So, so and it was this, this is all Kent County, and I think there was one other county within the state that it was kind of geared towards. Yeah, from a um, travel and leisure and as right a venue. The so when I was talking to the state rep yesterday, who was really behind, he actually ended up being on the trip to the. Skaggs. Uh, no, Skaggs was there, but um, if Fitzpatrick, I'm still getting to know the ones on this side. I, th I think, I that, think was, that was I his, think that's his name, but I'm okay. So he was the one that was really pushing it, and he says that the way that they expanded the uses is pretty open okay. to interpretation. Is you know, is in so we'll be able to utilize that. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So more to come. We have obviously I've got a lot more research to do on that, and so, so, so. You know, working with our attorneys, but um, we'll see where that goes. Thank you. Anything else, Jade? No. Thank you. Oh, was there anything on the facade improvements? I know we kind of submitted. The facade oh. Grant. oh, the, the grant. Uh, facade grant yeah. program. I forgot to put that on the list. Um, Andrea was going to speak to it, but she had to run. Um, she had sent out an email to get feedback. We got a couple people that gave feedback. So if, if we're going to, if if you can go and give that feedback and send it back. Survey. That'd be great. Good. Yep, because then we can really take yeah. those comments and work it in and then have that presented to you at the next meeting. I'm great. glad you said that. Thank you. And Jade, can you revisit again? I know we talked about it at a previous meeting, but I just cannot recall. I know that there is no um, Metro Police warm up. Is oh. is something? I have an update on that. Okay. Um, this is why I need to do it in writing so I don't forget these things. There is going to be a Metro Cruise up um, warm up. Okay. Oh. I so I saw something on online or something in print someplace. Yeah. So there's, I don't even know how this Excuse. got started, but. We were told that we couldn't do it because we couldn't use their name because there were new owners. Well, that is somewhat true. There were new owners, but who we heard that from is no longer associated with Metro Cruise, but Metro Cruise themselves, we just met with on 
Thursday or Friday, and they absolutely are going to do the Metro Cruise warm up on that Thursday. Okay. Okay. And then they call, if you go to it, and there are various spots along 28th, which they call pit stops, where they do events. They're actually going to be doing a pit stop at DNW as well. And uh, I'm sorry, at the shopping plaza, not at DNW. And then also, we brought their attention to Friendship Park. And we said, you need to look at this new amenity that we have because we could hire a band or do something fun during the event. He was a little bit, um, he's like, yeah, yeah, we're we're booked this year. We're booked this year. We're not sure what we're going to do. I got an email from him today. He's like, I drove by it. He goes, uh, what can we put there on Saturday? So I'm like, okay, I tell you, you build it, they will come, right? So to get back to your point, we will have the warm up. Metro Cruise is, is alive and well, and we're working with them on, and actually I think there's going to be more presence in the community than just on Thursday. Great. That's awesome. So, so I will keep you updated as the specifics. Actually, their special event is going to the board for approval on Wednesday. Yeah, what a great stage to maybe like do a sock hop and have the cars. I don't Wouldn't know, that be cool? Cars out on the, out on the lawn there. Oh, yeah. I, I think that'd be awesome. Yep. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he he op- he left it open today. Like, what can we do there? So he's, I think, his mind's spinning too. Remember when Jam and being up behind them did swing dancing? He might have some ideas how to make something like that happen. Whatever he had his band bring mm-hmm. down. And... That would be cool. Nice. So, so thanks for asking. Uh, any? We can move on to Article Sixteen. Any other business? Do have anything any new businesses in the area anything has left I don't, or... I don't know I don't know I don't I know that anything. are there any new I don't think there's been any new businesses in the district that I'm aware of we have some expansions going on in the industrial park um, but I don't know of anything new going mm-hmm. on in the district we might need it at Persia's Clean Persian. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? backyard. That was good. Yeah, it was, I was surprised. Where's that one at? Oh, good. Where's that Persian barbecue? Right? The, uh... That's not what it's called. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Back, back street? Back, back, backyard. Backyard. Yeah, backyard. 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 Next to Starbucks. So right across the street from me. Yeah. In the. Yeah. Oh, not in the village mall. No, no, no. 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 Oh, I was excited. <laughs> There's no eateries in that mall, is there? The other day, I'm like, hey, like in the downtown, yeah, but in in our in the village, in the village, is there any eateries there or no? Mm-hmm. Just I mean Starbucks. I mean I, I guess it's a that's not a eatery, a, but yeah. no, well, no, there's a, nothing else. That surprises me. Up and then there's the a street. clean juice, which is oh, yeah, by Firehouse yeah. Subs, but, but not in that village. By Firehouse Subs, no. That's and that I mean right those are night. some of the that things that you know, we've talked about that would be really nice yeah. to have some and great restaurants. Out. I think it was the village. There for a while, yeah. but I mean, other than so we're we having a conversation, like how we try to make it maybe. Yeah, he was um, very nice. Yes, I think yes. So, in terms of you know, kind of priorities of what in terms of the village development and what we want to what we want to see, you know, so the survey um, touched on retail, restaurant, just touched on it, but we were just talking about, you know, what do we want as priorities, you know, because everybody says, ja, it would be so great if we had some nice little bistro restaurants to go to, you know, in that cent- village center or whatever, which we don't have now. Hmm. Um, and so, you know, how do how do we have a con how do we have a conversation about that? You know, do we start here? Is that part of what we'll talk about next week in the stakeholder meeting? Um all, all of the above. Okay. Really, we, I think it's 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 looking at what the desires of the community, what the desires of the board. We work that into a concept. And then once th- that concept is done, then we actually can target. So let's say we wanted to have, um, let, so one of the the owner of the garage, the garage bar or the garage, yeah. I don't know if it's yeah. called just the garage, um, Max Benedict, he actually is a Cascade resident. Mm-hmm. He's coming to our stakeholder meeting. Mm-hmm. I've gotten to know him and I'm like, hey, you need to be a part of this. So mm-hmm. we, we 
if let's, I'm not saying that we need to target that, but let's say yeah. just that as an example, if we wanted a restaurant like that, we can then go out and say, Hey, look at this great concept. We'd love to have you consider cascade for another location. Or yeah. if we get inquiries or we hear of people make those connections, we have something to point to, to be like, yeah, we're open to that. This is the kind of thing that we want. Here's the zoning that goes with it. We have all of this in place so we can have those conversations, you know, right up front. Okay. Do you know, Jade, what is the, um, uh, where, within the, within the centennial, how full are, are the buildings? That's a really good question. Um, that's one of the things on my list is that I want to figure out what the occupancy rate is there. That's, thank you. Um, I've started to talk, actually, I talked with Tony about it, even though it's not really part of his, his concept that he's going to work on for us, but just from him and from an urban planning perspective, what he's seeing with um, redeveloped office use space. And because office space is not in demand, nor do I see it coming back in demand like it once was. Mm -mm. And every, almost every building in that complex has a four lease sign. And so I, you know, it, not so much the one story ones, like the one that we're in, in the admin building, but any of the ones that are two stories and above are multi-tenant and they are, they're seeing vacancies. So, you know, how do we redevelop a, something like that? You've got, you've got a really good transition from residential into that because of the way that it's kind of laid out. So you could do some sort of mixed use residential, but that all has to go through a planning and vetting process. But And not that it's in the DDA, but um, is there much industrial space or property left on, is it 36th Street? That's, cause that's no. part of the township, right? Or yeah. Um, I get a little fuzzy over there still, but um, the only reason I say I was reading in the Cranes Business News today that that is the highest demand right now is industrial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, property. in in I can say this with well, I'm fairly certain with this that the board is really hesitant about more industry over in that area because of what could possibly happen along M6 and with more on and off ramps if if there was a more demand for exit and entrance ramps. Um, so that's kind of a, it's been a debate at the mm -hmm. board of trustees level mm -hmm. um, for that. But I I don't think we have much space over there. We actually had someone come that's looking to expand their current location, but I don't know that we've actually had any inquiries for a new, yeah. new location. There's a lot of land by the airport, I know, it, to yeah. be developed. Yeah. On Patterson. Okay, uh -huh. Just around there or on, um, 36 coming off of 36th Street, if I got my streets right. Yeah, they, they, yeah that, that's what I was referring to. Yeah, because that's a, still in the township, I think, 36th Street. It is. Up until you get to Patterson. Yeah, that's the boundary. Patterson. Yeah. Um, I don't know who owns that, if the airport owns it and is trying to lease it or what have you. Yeah, yeah they don't They don't own it. And there's in the Centennial Park that you brought up, there's still a lot of open land there that be to develop as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. right there. I think our master plan is going to help with that because I think there was this is goes back a couple of years, but there was a couple of proposals that were brought in for some mixed use or some condos, more residential, not office space, that um, it did not go far. There were some issues with it, but I think that with our new master plan and the updated zoning too, it'll be more attractive to go out and then pursue somebody within the parameters of what the township is looking to looking for in that area. Cause there's like that seven acre parcel that's we can it's off a of top or not off a of Tahoe off of um, Charlevoix that the Butsom's condos. Yeah. There is a demand for housing. Okay. If we're all done with discussion, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Make the motion to adjourn. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That adjourns this meeting.